Okay, so this is going to have to get turned into a couple of videos because that went too long, but um, this negative 0.79, negative 0.56 is the solution we found by pulling it from the graph here uh, that we were just looking at. So one of the fun things about having this set up to just run and then plot the arrows is that we could start from a different place in the weight space and see how this algorithm just follows this slope down to find this point. So let's start somewhere different, okay? Let's start somewhere, I don't know, up here. Let's say this is right around 2, 2 ish. So let's just start somewhere up there and see what happens. Let me go back and change my start point. Now, by starting at 2, 2, remember, I'm starting at 2, 2 in the weight space. The weight space is comprised of the one weight value and the one bias value uh, in our tiny single node, single connection network. When I run it, I'm starting, that looks pretty cool, I'm starting at the point 2, 2, which means I set the weight to 2, I set the bias to 2, and then I just let it go. I let the algorithm do its thing. And let me blow this up. So that's over here. You can see the weights were decreasing, decreasing quite a bit here. Once we hit, must be kind of a nice little split down this line, uh, the biases start to decrease as well and both the weight and biases decrease. Now this is interesting. Now this is direct gradient descent, remember. When we plotted the high detail version, there's some contours over here that sort of look a little bit like a, like a teardrop. So we actually are headed straight down the gradient and then we fall into that little tiny tip, the sharp end of the teardrop, and then immediately turn to the left. And then the bias starts increasing again while the weight, I'm sorry, the weights start increasing again while the bias continues to decrease. And then we arrive at our solution, right? So one thing that's pretty neat about this is that the algorithm finds a solution that's pretty darn close to the one that we just found by inspection. Um, so that's nice. Another nice thing, besides being able to start this at any other point, is <coughs> here there's quite a bit of work involved in adding another, another data point. Now I could do it, and in fact maybe I will, <coughs> sorry, uh, but it's trivial to add it over here. So let's pick just visually, let's pick another point. Um, I would say let's pick something up here. Let's say it's on the x-axis, so the x-coordinate is 0, and the y-coordinate will be something a little bit less than 0 0.9, like 0 0.8. So 0, comma 0.8. Let me go back to my list of data. I know you can't see this, but there's nothing exciting to see. Uh, 0 0.8. And let's run it again and look at our error surface. Now before we do that, I'm going to turn off the algorithm. So we just look at the plot. Okay, quite different. Oh, you know what? I guess we can get rid of our solution dot here. So as you can see, I've added one more data point. The data surface is much, it's much more complicated uh, and it's definitely very different. So it looks like this is the, this is kind of the good solution region over here. So no matter where we start, I would expect us to end up over there. Now I'm gonna get rid of that blue dot because that's not a solution that we care about anymore. Like that. And then I'm going to turn on the algorithm again and run it with the same tolerance. And let's see what we get. All right. So I started from the same place up here at 2, 2. And just followed the gradient. As you can see, it's relatively small here. In fact, I can zoom in a little bit more. Uh, these are very small gradients. You can see the gradients get large here as the contours get closer and closer together. Make a left here, make a little bit of a right, end up over here, which is apparently a solution. Um, and just for just for giggles, I'm gonna I'll pause it and I'll do all the extra work to put in a third data point here. And let's just I'll I'll put it in. I'll set the values based on the numbers that come off the graph here and it should be pretty good. I'll set it to this point over here, which is looks like negative 2.78 and 1.4 for the bias. So I'll be right back.
Okay, uh, I went ahead and made the updates. Here's our third data point. It's off the screen, but it behaves just as before, where uh, it's an ordered pair that I have control over, and I've added it to the equations for the bias. As you can see, it's moving here. Uh, and for the weight, if I were to change this, you can see that it's taken into account. Um, but these three points look like something that a, a sigmoid curve could go through. So I expect that it should be fairly steep in order to get through this point. So I would expect a large weight um, and it's gonna probably gonna have to get shifted over just so that it lines up just right. Uh, but the points are now 1.2, negative 3.5.9, and 0, comma 0 0.8. So these are the three data points. I have them plugged into the script here. Now let's run it. Here's our error surface. I have the tolerance set pretty low. Um, and we started over here and it took us all the way over here. Let me just zoom way in. And this looks like negative 2.77 comma 1.39. Negative 2.77, 1.39. So negative 2.77, 1.39. Interesting. That is the right one, right? I think so. <laughs> now, you can see both of these points nailed him. This point definitely missed it. Now, the algorithm, remember, is minimizing the error surface. So it doesn't mean that there's going to be a solution. It just means that what it finds will be the nearest thing it can find to a solution, right? It's easy to pick points that have no solution. For example, I could have made this a point that's very low, and I could make this third one a point that's very high. Something like this, I clearly wouldn't be able to get through. Okay, So in fact, let's just see what we get. One, one half. I'll leave this guy alone. And this one is at 0 0.3. Okay. Negative three and a half point nine, zero and sorry, you can't see this. Um, and then what's the other one? One and one half. And let's see what we get. Well, now that's an interesting looking error surface. So we started over here. The algorithm takes us down the hill. This is point. 080. So this is where the minimum error is going to be. Um, I'm just curious how this actually matches up with the data. What is the value here? So the weight is at, oops, I can't see it. The weight is at negative 0.49 and the bias is at negative 0.11. So let's try that out. Negatives. 0.49, negative 0.11, like that. And that actually looks pretty reasonable, right? I mean, if you had to make a sigmoid curve go through these three points, which it clearly can't go through, that's really not a bad option. Uh, you can see it sort of has the same behavior. In general, the data set seems to be slanted downwards. Um, it sort of splits the difference over here between these two data points, which it has no chance of getting to. Um, and it stays similar to this guy, which is probably, I mean, I don't know. This is just, this is just what comes out, right? Uh, and this is, I guess, I mean, this is, perhaps this is good to see. Um, it's illustrative because the algorithm will be finding a minimum of the error surface, which is the best approximation it can make to the data it's provided. Now, I've provided three completely nonlinear data points um, that are actually set up in a way that there's no curve, there's no sigmoid pair of weights and biases that could actually make this happen. Um, but the result I'm getting seems, seems pretty good. So I'd be willing to bet if we make one change, I want to take this data point here and scoot it out to the right, I'd be willing to bet that this becomes a lot flatter. 
the weight becomes a lot smaller near zero. So let's try that. Where is the x coordinate here? So let's make this like uh, three, something like that. All right. Um, so three comma one half. Let me go back over here, and here's my data points. Let's make this guy that was one three. Okay. And let's run it and see what we get. All right, now this error surface is totally crazy looking. Uh, but it looks like, oops, I always move this off. It looks like the weight is small and negative. The bias is small and positive. Let's see if we can get some better approximations. So let's see, negative 0.26 and bias is 0.19. So negative, negative 0.26, bias is 0.19, like that. And there it is, right? Fairly smooth, kind of, kind of the best we can get. Now as an experiment, let's try something different. Let's make these symmetrical. Let's make a triangle, okay? Something that maybe we should just split the difference on. Uh, intuitively, that sounds reasonable. So negative 3, let's make this 0 0.8, let's make this guy 3, 0 0.8, and we'll leave this um, at 0 0.3, that's fine. Okay, so we've got, I'm just fixing up the data now, so negative 3, 0.8, 3 and 0.8, and 0 and 0.3. Okay, clearly I can't go through this with a sigmoid shaped curve. I would expect to see something basically flat, which means the weight's gonna be basically zero and that's pretty much it. So let's see what it does. All right, that's a pretty spectacular looking thing. Uh, and what did we get? Oh, that's really cool. Um, we got, ugh, this is never on the screen, 8.6 times 10 to the negative seventh. So the weight is basically zero. The bias is 0.545, so 0.55. So let's make the weight basically zero. And this is 0.55, which puts me right there. Okay, that sounds pretty pretty reasonable. Um, and then finally, just so we can have a nicer solution, let's bring this guy on the left back down. Uh, let's bring him down. Make it very, very low. This is something that looks looks reasonable. This looks like something I might be able to get close to. So I've changed the negative 3 uh, output expected value to 0 0.05. So negative 3, I want to get... 0 0.05 and let's run it and see what we get. Now our solution is over here and that looks like 0.74 negative 0.84 so let's go 0.74 negative 0.84. Boom, there it is. So this is something that I could massage this curve into going through, at least close. Uh, and, you know, there it is. If, if it's possible to get close to, this to these data points, um, the algorithm theoretically should find it. And you can see it did a pretty good, pretty darn good job here. Uh, so that is that. That's sort of enough, I think, of beating to death this poor little simplistic network. Um, I think what I'd like to do next is take, not, not change the network at all, maybe come up with some difficult to learn data and we can add in momentum terms to these to see how the path that it takes in the solution space, right? Uh, differs from the path it takes when it's just gradient descent. Okay, so uh, I'll save that for next time, and I will see you guys then. Hope you enjoyed it.